At a date that shall remain classified, a field agent operating under the name Eugene Smith provided a tip to local foundation personnel and requested the armed examination of an unnamed mine in the Yukon Territory of Canada. Due to the weakness of his lead and the possible danger should his estimation be proven accurate, the foundation assembled seven members of Mobile Task Force Omega Orange to reconnoiter the mine. Numerous other mobile task force units at the local Ford operating base were assembled as a quick reaction force should the recon team make anomalous contact. Emmanuel Ross was assigned as acting supervisor to Bravo team, with Captain Adam Kruger as team leader. I think we should go back to that place that Smithy showed us when this is over. Get my dinner menu. Oh, uh, you'll have to try the club sandwich I ordered. Pretty fucking good. I don't know. Kinda wanna try a new place, see what else is there. Kinda want breakfast for dinner tonight. Mmm. That sounds good. We should have took something to go. You know, even if Smithy's lead is worthless, the thought still kinda counts. Once we come out here with the boys, check out a cool place, maybe do some Tactical shit. Yeah, well, a lead's still a lead. Don't get complacent. Bravo 2's chucked up, Kruger. Roger, Dodger, hear me. Let's move out, boys. Weather's picking up. Shit, boys. There fucking is. Hamilton, as far as we know, this hook will go all the way to China. Cops are gonna go south when we're in there, so we'll be checking in regularly. If we're not able to come up and say hi within a two hour window, call in for QRF. Quinn, you're on point. TL, we got a fork here. Quinn, take left with McMahon and Graham. Ross and I will go right. I'll take point. You enjoying your work, Ross? Some days. Yep. Some days, I guess. I don't really know how to feel about it. It seems like a buffer zone for guys who barely pass election. Well, we're not so bad. No psychos in my unit. You should fucking see Alpha. TL, we got a reinforced door over here. Permission to deploy charges? Gonna need a heavy load for this one. Granted. Three, two, one, fire in the hole. One four, making entry. You gotta be kidding me with this. Smithy was right. Government geological shit, right inside the mine. This is indeed a sign of a geological nature. Why hide it from the public? They afraid the Russians were gonna try to steal all their rocks? Fuck knows. I don't think anyone here is really qualified on the subject. Correct me if I'm wrong, though. Any geologists here? This place has a renewable energy source we can still boot up. Right hall clear. Middle room clear. Left hall clear. Here she is. Just give me a second. OK. 
Okay, fellas, you should be getting lights in just a moment. Emergency lights are on. Could be a glitch. Or it could be working as intended. Lord knows how old this tech is. And unless they left in a hurry, I'll reckon they nuked about every hard drive in this building. It's a big place. They must have left something behind, even if they had the time to leave. Well, computers booted up just fine. This is definitely the boss's office. Overlooks a large open cave system. From what I can tell, this computer was probably last used in like... Which is, I'm guessing why they ran this on Windows. However, in spite of this, it looks like they had a pretty good thing going. All the logs are imported from every computer onto one shared drive that the higher-ups can peek into. Why not just dump everything? The Glade didn't want people to know about this place. Guess we'll find out. I can copy all the important shit over here and just take the hard drive with us on the way out. We should have enough space. They've got massive banks of audio and video logs. I could skim through them over here. Might give us a good heads up if you guys are about to step into some shit or something. Alright, keep me posted. I'm gonna send someone up to check in. Bravo 2, this is Bravo 1-5. Exiting the mine. Over. Roger, 1-5. You find anything in there? This is Dr. Fields, recording a log for November 7th, 2005. Dr. Mack took the liberty of visiting a local heritage museum for us where he got us a few scans of some of the old 19th century documentation. What I find interesting is that much of the things we've encountered are touched upon in these papers. It's the reason they stopped so short of their goal here. Now, I should clarify that much of what's mentioned here is incredibly mild compared to now, but it does seem to be consistent with what we're experiencing. Mostly unstable terrain and unnatural temperature fluctuations. That's the short version anyway. Now, speaking of temperatures, ours have been flattening out as of this week, so I'm not sure we're going to have much to report on. This is going to be a long fucking day. Bravo 2's up to speed. Good. Let's go check out the lower wing. I don't think McMahon's going to find anything for a little while. Good afternoon. Tonight's dinner will be chicken parmesan and spaghetti. How much do you think this place cost the taxpayer? Millions? Billions? Not enough to keep them from discarding it. Remember to consume your assigned medication daily. Wait, hold up. We got a body here. Well, shit. Here I thought Smithy was just taking us for a walk. Graham, take the corpse upstairs and give it a good once-over. See if you can figure out how this guy bit the dust. Ross, you should probably give him a hand with moving the body. Then go tell Bravo 2 that we need a containment team assembled and put on standby. What about you and Quinn? We'll clear out the rest of the place. I'll try to stay in touch, but comms are gonna be bad. Stay frosty, people. We have certainty of a threat right now. Memo to Mr. Gibbons from the director. I noticed you didn't put the new cover sheets on your TPS report. If you could use the new cover sheets from now on, that would be great. Hey, check this out. Got a base of water here. Must have defrosted pretty quick. TL, you read me? Barely, but, uh, send it. You're at the, uh, bottom, right? All the way in the back? I don't know. It looks like more space to go into, but the area's flooded. <laughs> TL, that is an entrance to a massive body of subterranean water. You're kidding. Negative. They've got dive suits in the decontamination chambers you passed earlier. Well, how about it, Quinn? Wanna go swimming with me? Are you asking because I have a choice? Dive suits airtight. Oxygen's topped off. Good. Let's move. Shipment of fresh pills arrived for the workers. 
New ones should help temporarily block any contamination. It's not a permanent solution, but it's peace of mind. Right now we've seen a rapid shift in behavior of new samples. The rocks, dirt, and fauna we remove, they age completely different than before. All of it appears to rot away within a matter of days. The team has yet to develop an explanation for this. The old samples, they last much longer. These new ones, well, they're the same in terms of structure, front to back, but their behavior is just wildly different. If you leave them beyond the decontamination chambers and near the water, they don't decompose, they dissolve. Now that just makes this all weirder to me. Guy's been completely mummified. That's wild. Poor bastard. You need anything else? I'm gonna go check in with Bravo too. I'm good here. Descending. Water's warm as hell. You see anything? Uh, got a tunnel here. Roger. Let's check it out. Hey, real shit, right? What's up? What happens when there's an anomaly so widespread that in order to keep it classified, they'd have to use amnesiacs on, like, everybody? <sighs> That's an interesting thought. But how do you know it hasn't happened already? Well, shit. I guess I don't. Jesus. Kruger, we're not gonna have nearly enough time to explore this place. Alright, here's what we'll do. Let's get a few samples of the terrain, bag them, and get the fuck out. If we can't find shit, let's hope the other guys can dig something else up. Roger that. an incident this morning. Holland and Bradley were returning from an expedition. They found a small vein of iron where they carved out a sample. On the way back, communications between us were slashed. I don't know how. Holland came back. Bradley didn't. After Holland returned, something happened to him attached to his leg. We intend to evacuate once Dr. Crawford turns off the power. The last I heard from anyone was they were gonna try to take that thing off Holland's leg, but nobody's picking up the phone. Now I can't find my pills. There's something wrong with my nose. T.O., you read me? Kruger, come in. Do you read me?
stable, but he'll need a Cassie back. How are his chances? Not good. Look, you need to get your shit together and come up to talk with the team. You good? <sighs> yeah. Let's go. Gwen is contaminated, so we need an exit strategy, and we need one fast. Bravo 2 signal for QRF. MTF Beta 7 seemed like the safe bet. Look, a lot of shit's been dropped on us, and we need to lay it all out. Right now. For starters, like you guys were down on the lake, I was nearly killed by a cave-in. Which means we're also stuck here until either us or Bravo 2 can demo it. Anything happened to you that you think might be related? The reason we cut and ran was because of a noise we heard once we began taking a sample. Might be connected. Whatever attacked Quinn did a number on the previous occupants. There's a filtration system that passes over the decontamination rooms. They're designed to provide oxygen going into the lake, but the ones going into the room are totally separate. Something damaged them. So anyone in here that didn't make their escape was subject to that breach. Which explains the corpse in the decontamination room. Speaking of which, Graham, what's your assessment? Dr. Crawford locked himself off, probably for protection, then ingested cyanide. Pretty cut and dry. Look, I need to go stay with Quinn, make sure he's safe. Go ahead. The power was off when we arrived. The decontamination room has its own backup generator, so I imagine Crawford shut the place down, then waited inside there for a response by CBRN. Guess it didn't get here fast enough. Okay, but why is his body the only one here? I mean, there isn't even a drop of blood anywhere in this place, let alone another corpse. We can save it for the QRF. What we know for sure is that we have a biological threat in addition to a physical threat present in the station. Remember to always keep your hands well sanitized after handling any samples. Graham. Graham. I, I, I need my I need my weapon. Graham. You there? You there? up was turned into human soup, and then just converted into chemical mist. That explains why samples taken from the lake were subsequently dissolved. It treats itself as it would a piece of tissue. Right now, we've just jump-started it back to life. Its immune system's gonna return in force, and when it does, it's gonna send more antibodies out here to make sure we're neutralized. Okay, then we need to hustle. Ross, go with Graham, get upstairs and use Quinn's plastic to kick this fucker's teeth out of its mouth. Make sure to signal Bravo 2 first before you detonate. What about you and McMahon? Well, we can't accurately approximate how long we'll be down here for. The demo could either be insufficient or even make the problem worse. If we're stuck here for a while, we need to kill the power to ensure the threat remains inactive. Roger that. Good luck. This all goes to plan. I'll make sure the Foundation knows what you boys did here. Just try to get out safe. Yeah. You too. Work. I can cover you. 
think that did the trick? Maybe. But I think it'll take time for its immune system to fully shut down. So, keep your guard up. Bravo 2, we got charges set. Roger that. End of recording. Sergeant Francisco Quinn and Captain Adam Kruger will be the only casualties taken during the operation. Seven months after this recording, an inquiry was held between both the Canadian government and the Foundation. The on-site director was revealed to have omitted key facts in both his incident report and his call to the emergency responders, forcing the government to lock down the mine rather than perform a full investigation of the site. This temporarily covered up his administrative negligence that resulted in the deaths of all present staff. To maintain both the rule of law and the secrecy of this anomaly, he has since been given amnesiacs and is now serving prison time for a falsified crime that he is unaware he didn't commit. With help from the local government, the unnamed mine currently remains monitored and is under containment by the Foundation. Locals remain advised never to approach it. <laughs>